What can art bring to knowledge of brain and mind? What does it bring to perception, thoughts, emotions, or multiple human and non-human intelligences? Well, privileged minds of other times, like that of my compatriot Wolfgang Goethe, had a clear response to these questions. He used to say in the Metamorphosis of Plants that art is a revelation of uh, nature hidden laws. He also regretted that nobody wanted to understand the intimate union between poetry and science, and he prognosed that with time, art and science would make up a prolific and close alliance in the highest regions of the human spirit. Arts and humanities, much earlier than neuroscience, ecology, or computation, have deepened in different ways in the source of all experience and knowledge in our brain. Both have echoed uh, what and how we think, feel, perceive, relate to each other, or move around. It is only that production of experiences and knowledge of arts and humanities is different in form and function from that of sciences, at least apparently. Many things make it different from each other, structures and scopes uh, where they are in, and surely in terms of methods and aims, but what joins them in essence is to make visible the invisible and to contribute to a greater understanding and comprehension of the world we live in and the constructions and realities in plural our brain and our mind has contributed to. To the extent that some Eastern wisdoms stated already in the fourth century before Christ that with our thoughts we make the world, or in other words, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. We could speak longer about this topic, and here and now, just as a brief uh, introduction, I can only offer you a virtual itinerary uh, to have a look at the works of the exhibition when the soul butterflies flap the wings. The title is inspired on the name given by Ramon and Cajal to neurons, uh, referring to them as one of the most delicate cells of nature. And the flapping of the wings will one day shed a light on the secret of mental health. During our um, itinerary, I will try to reply to the questions that have motivated this exhibition. What can art bring to knowledge of brain and mind? And what does it bring to perception, thoughts, emotions, or multiple human and artificial intelligences?
Firstly, and you're going to see this as soon as you enter the exhibition, works such as Synaptic Passage by Daniel Kanogar gets us closer to the real scope of our neural network, made up by approximately 86,000 millions of neurons, and their prolongations would reach a length equivalent to the distance between Earth and Sun. It is not the same to know the data than to feel physically that something so small as brain with hardly between 1,300 and 1,500 grams of body weight uh, may be so huge. So the understanding of scales and the relative value of the small and the big is one of the first experiences arts can uh, provide us with. Regarding magnitudes, I have to mention the results of one of the most recent research works performed by Italian and German neuroscientists and astrophysicians, Frontiers in Physics. They have just revealed the common patterns between what is the neural network of a human brain and the cosmic map uh, known as up to now, discovering striking similarities between both, uh, regardless the fact that they are as, uh, away from each other at a scale of 27 orders of magnitude, that is uh, thousands of millions of billions of billions of difference. Daniel Kanaga. Synaptic Passage, 2010 Imagine if your entire neural network was spread out in a single line. Do you know how far it would go? It would reach from the Earth to the Sun, a length of 150 million kilometers. In view of that huge distance, it is surprising that the brain occupies only 2% of our body mass. However, it consumes 20% of our daily energy and 15% of our cardiac output. That gives us an idea of the magnitude of its activity. Daniel Kanaga's work invites us to enter a neural network formed by some 80 kilograms of recycled wires to experience a fundamental change of scale. The immensity of the apparently small. Synaptic Passage was created by the artist 10 years ago for the exhibit Brain. The inside story at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. The flashing video animations that remind us of electrical discharges are projected on the wires, making us feel immersed in incessant brain activity that does not rest even when we sleep. The animations remind us of the sound of constant communication, orchestrated by more than 100 billion neurons interconnected through axons and membrane specializations known as synapses. second work in our itinerary is Cell F by Guy Ben-Ari that addresses the structural basis of the neural network and its communicative and creative potential. Cell F is the first analog synthesizer, a musical instrument built up uh, with a neural fabric in vitro of Benari himself. It is a good instance of an artistic project as a result of the collaboration with several labs of neuroscience in Australia and Europe, among them the University of Barcelona. This work 
work is, in fact, a good example of collaboration between artists, scientists, engineers, with a result that we could have never imagined without the participation of the three parties involved. Due to restrictions of COVID, we have not been able to organize the live concert between musicians and neurons as uh, so we had planned. But we have brought here the analog modular synthesizer and the video where you can all see and listen to neurons when they communicate to each other. And uh, having said that, the sound you will listen to when you enter the virtual exhibition, something very similar to the noise uh, of a shortwave radio station, is the intracellular sound registry of a pyramidal neuron of the hippocampus, kindly provided by the Experimental and Computational Neurophysiology Lab of Instituto Cajal. CSIC Madrid. Guy Benai. Cell F. 2015. Do you know what neurons sound like? Can you imagine a neural instrument capable of interacting with other musicians? This instrument exists. You're in front of it. Four years of research and development were necessary to create Cell F. It is indeed the first neural synthesizer in the world, an unprecedented neural musical instrument. The work is the result of interdisciplinary collaboration among various laboratories in Australia and Europe and has been developed jointly by artists and scientists. As Guy Benari explains, the brain of Celef is made up of a biological neural network created from his own skin cells. The team transformed these cells into neurons through a complex bioengineering procedure. The resulting in vitro neural tissue made up of some 100,000 neurons grows in a Petri dish and controls a series of custom-made analog synthesizers in real time. As you can see in the images and video, it is a completely autonomous, wet, analog instrument that responds to stimuli received in a concert with other musicians. During the performance, the sound created by the musicians excites the neurons, which then respond by controlling the synthesizers, and together they perform live, post-human sound improvisations. It is important to clarify that this project is not based on either artificial or natural intelligence. In the absence of terminology that adequately explains the autonomy and plasticity of cell F, the tissue is best understood as an in vitro intelligence that functions like a brain outside the body. Human brains contain approximately 100 billion cells. The brain used to control. The next two works, Soliloquium and Post-Content and Coherence by Miguel Angel Rego, address from different standpoints our neural pathologies that alter perception and memory. What is most important is that, as we have heard, here art facilitates understanding of people with special skills. Works promote our ability to put ourselves in other people's positions and understand their perspectives, difficulties, and also their value when providing experiences and knowledge different from what we uh, people without those special skills can experience. To summarize, here art provides a socializing dimension that takes us beyond a clinical or therapeutic uh, uh, profile or manifestation. Miguel Angel Rigo. Soliloquium, 2018 to 2019. Even the most sophisticated Swiss watches cannot compare with the complex interlocking of some 100 billion neurons that inhabit our brains. With trillions of synapses active at all times, even when we sleep. So, it is not surprising that the slightest mismatch can generate alterations in our way of thinking, 
feeling, and relating to our environment. While it is true that mental illnesses are among the least visible pathologies according to public opinion, data provided by the World Health Organization shows that about 450 million people worldwide have some kind of suffering due to brain failure. Miguel Angel Rigo's work makes visible one of these difficult pathologies, visual agnosia. People who suffer from it are unable to recognize the information that comes from the outside through sight, although they are not blind. Therefore, they often make use of other senses to recognize the faces of those around them. In Soliloquium we can see on three screens the same person talking to himself. Each monologue represents a different reality, and each part of the audiovisual work deals with different aspects of the same illness. The epistemic through the main character, the rhetoric, through the poem The Blind by Jorge Luis Borges, and the empirical through studies done with primates, which analyzed how they could recognize themselves in front of a mirror. Part of the work is also the interpretation of different drawings by ¿Es la realidad producto de nuestra mente? En ese caso, deberíamos decir nuestra realidad. No existe una The next interactive installation, Membrane by Ursula Dammels, addresses the alteration of perception. This work allows each visitor to interact with an artificial intelligence system to experience how the minimum uh, changes of our uh, space uh, temporary parameters, normal ones, quote unquote, transform the vision of the world surrounding us. The French philosopher Jean Baudelaire used to say that machines represent the show, and I would add the patterns of our own thoughts. In fact, artificial intelligence has rekindled our reflections and debates on human intelligence, even intelligence of other species. In the exhibition itinerary, we will face different types of intelligences because there is not just one single intelligence. Ursula Dam, Membrane. 2019. Can an artificial intelligence system not only process and manage information, but also create something new? Something fictional, imaginary, and original? To answer this question, German artist Ursula Dam has created an interactive work in which you can experiment to find out. You have two screens in front of you. The first one shows real-time images of the L.A. Borel foyer. The second one records the interior of the exhibition hall through the camera on the tripod. You can move it to choose the part of the space or the people you want to appear on that screen. Remember to wear gloves. In this work, the camera is like an eye that looks, while the artificial intelligence is the mind that sees. Seeing is not the same as looking. We use our eyes to capture and record, and our brain to see and recognize what we are looking at. Many variables or filters are involved in this cognitive process. Our education, culture, memories, and moods. In this installation, the artificial intelligence processes what it sees and what we manipulate through the console. In addition, the system filters and transforms the records through algorithms. In Membrane, the artist works with TGN temporary generative adverse networks to implement a certain kind of unsupervised learning. Here, two subnetworks give each other feedback. One is the generator that produces short sequences of images, and the other is the discriminator that evaluates the artificially produced footage and decides whether it is acceptable or not. 
The aim is that the artificial intelligence of the work can invent a new, more radical image sequences from randomly learned associations and through the user's interactions with the system. Do you want to try it? Please wear gloves and follow the instructions for handling the console. The work Machine Biography by Clara Bohan Diego Diaz uh, looks into the learning process, uh, memory, and predictive capacities of artificial intelligence. The work leads also to an educational project in which both artists, in collaboration with two scientific experts of the Center of Artificial Intelligence of the University of Oviedo, will work with high school students uh, uh, studying at five different Asturian centers. During those interdisciplinary workshops, the students will learn to research and make up their own portrait or data selfie based on the registers uh, social media have regarding the interaction of each of them with the system. This educational experience with a new format is possible thanks to the participation of Laboral Art Center in the European project uh, Studio Topia Science Meets Art in the Anthropocene. Clara Bock and Diego Diaz. Machine Biography, 2020. One of the virtues of artificial intelligence is its ability to manage vast amounts of data. Predictive analysis is, in fact, one of the most frequent uses of what is known as machine learning. Its algorithms find patterns of behavior and evolution and are capable of anticipating probable future events. There is no doubt that this is all valuable in an increasingly complex and intertwined world. But what does it mean in a person's own life? How important can one's personal data be, not only for one's present, but also for one's future? To what extent can this knowledge condition us? Artists Clara Bioj and Diego Diaz wanted to investigate the predictive capabilities of algorithms in this context. To do so, they fed an artificial intelligence with data collected from their digital activity during 2017. Their geolocations, digital conversations, videos, and photographs. In this new project, Bok and Diaz use this information to train several deep neural networks to see where and how they would be in the year 2050. They have printed the data generated to create 365 books, a probable but fictitious biography created by an artificial intelligence. In it, The learning and communication process of two systems of AI is also addressed by the interactive work, Speculative Artificial Intelligence, by Mirk Schmidt-Husen. The installation, in this case, allows us to perceive and even interact with the process of functioning of artificial neural networks through visual and sound conversations between two systems. As you probably know, this work has been produced in Laboral in close collaboration with the Artificial Intelligence Center of the University of Oviedo. Burke Schmitherson. Speculative Artificial Intelligence, 2019. How is it possible for two artificial intelligence systems to be able to communicate with each other without any human intervention? Although we may not be fully aware of it, most digital systems today exchange signals with each other autonomously and continuously. 
German artist Berk Schmitherson shows that in his light and sound installation. To do so, he creates two sculptural objects. The first is formed by a kind of a brain containing 13,000 LEs. The light sequence generates the message that communicates with the second object, which has a group of speakers capable of emitting a wide range of sounds to communicate with the first object. Each sculpture is also equipped with a device that captures the messages of its companion. A microphone for listening, in one case, and a camera for seeing the lights, in the other. What is relevant is that both are equipped with a small artificial brain, with which they understand the messages they receive, think, and produce a response based on some message response models introduced by the artist. The core of the system consists of two algorithms, in this case, artificial neural networks. Initially, artificial neuron networks were inspired by biological neurons. But their evolution has led them to become lists of mathematically simple operations that are executed billions of times simultaneously. These networks are the fundamental reason for the rise of today's artificial intelligence, and they are present everywhere, from our mobile phones to the large supercomputing centers. In this case, the two sculptures are in an endless audiovisual dialogue that is constantly changing. The viewer can follow the conversation in silence or interrupt with his own voice or body in the camera's field of view. In addition to interacting with the system, the artist invites reflection on the concepts of communication, autonomy and intelligence of people and machines. Intelligence is something about the ability to understand each other, to learn things and to draw conclusions. And it's somehow associated with human behavior as well. I find it quite interesting that the term intelligence is not really unique defined and still the science um, is opening this huge field of artificial intelligence without even proper defining the term intelligence itself properly because mainly scientists are always asking for precision in their definitions of terms but the term, as I said, intelligence, artificial intelligence is not properly defined and still it's like a very big field of research. Since we as human, we don't have a sense for intelligence, it's hard for us to like quantify intelligence. Um, and we are not sure about the concept of intelligence itself. Um, that's why I title my work Speculative Artificial Intelligence because we, are not, we cannot perceive intelligence, we can just speculate about what it is and speculate about it. On the other hand, if we associate um, intelligence with human behavior, that's what I said at the beginning, then the term artificial intelligence itself gets a little bit absurd because artificial intelligence is created by computers and if we if we bring intelligence together with human behavior, it's very absurd because computers are no humans. There's no artificial human around. So this whole term is kind of speculative by definition. But because of this, artificial intelligence, I guess, is an invitation to all different kind of research. Another interactive installation, Uncanny Mirror by Mario Klingelmann, also addresses uh, the learning and memory of AI. This work does not uh, reflect uh, the way in which a mirror represents us, but rather how AI sees us, trained in a very specific way. Mario Klingelmann, Uncanny Mirror. 2019. Who doesn't look in the mirror? This human ability sets us apart from the vast majority of animals. From the age of 20 months, we are aware of our own image and recognize ourselves in the mirror. Uncanny Mirror, created by Mario Klingman, a pioneer in artistic work with artificial intelligence, challenges the certainty of a traditional mirror. Using a specific artificial intelligence tool, the interactive installation produces digital portraits for each visitor in real time. But these are not identical reproductions of the original subject. 
What the mirror shows is the invented image of someone who could be a spectator of the work. The artist uses a specific architecture of deep neural networks called a GEN, short for Generative Adversarial Network. It is very effective for learning how to generate new images that could be part of the set of examples that serve to train the network. In this case, the set is the images of all the visitors who have participated in the work. As Klingman explains, GANs work with two neural networks. One has the function of a generator, which tries to produce images that resemble the training examples given previously. The second network functions as a discriminator that tries to learn to distinguish real images, such as those of the training set, from false images, those produced by the generator. As these two networks operate alternately, they play a game of adversaries hence the name, and in the effort to win, the set improves until the images it generates are indistinguishable from those of the training set. Klingman's artwork is constantly learning, assimilating the data of everyone who looks in this unusual mirror. Each new portrait is based on the accumulated knowledge of the machine. Every face it produces contains something of those who have passed by it before. Uncanny Mirror offers a new perspective. Will we recognize ourselves in this strange mirror? It is also special, the type of basic intelligence as that related to emotions, uh, uh, the robot arm called Amygdala by Marco Donnarumma has been trained in this. This device has been programmed to cut artificial skin, so following a specific skin cutting technique that is still being used by some tribes in Papua New Guinea, Africa and Central Asia and it is performed as a proof of resistance to have access to certain social uh, positions. Marco Donnarumma, Amygdala, 2016 to 2018. This interactive artificial intelligence installation is part of the series of seven configurations that raises several questions about the integration of new technologies in people's lives and bodies. Its name refers to the set of neurons that are part of our limbic system, our primitive brain, whose main function is to store and process all kinds of emotional reactions. In this work, Donnarumma trains an artificial intelligence system with basic instincts, such as affection, fear, or aggression. To this end, it is inspired by the ritual of skin cutting that certain tribes of Papua New Guinea, Africa, and Central Asia continue to practice, to learn how to manage those emotions, and as an endurance test, in order to gain access to certain social positions. In amygdala, the sharp knife moves and cuts a large piece of artificial skin thanks to a robotic arm. The arm, directed by artificial neural networks, mimics the animal sensorimotor system. Its movements arise spontaneously, as it learns and adapts its behavior with each cut. This work raises questions concerning the tests or access rituals of today's technocratic society, as well as the influence of artificial intelligence on our emotional states. The collection of those uh, skins manipulated by AI can be appreciated in Calyx. Marco Donnarumma. Calyx, 
2019. Calyx is also one of the pieces in the Seven Configurations series. This is a sculptural installation composed of different pieces of hardened leather. Each skin is unique and has specific marks and scars caused by the cuts made by a robotic arm called amygdala. The skins are, in fact, relics of this robot's performance during the exhibitions in which it has been shown. During several months of exposure, amygdala uses a steel knife to carefully cut and sculpt the skin, with no objective beyond learning how to cut. At first, the skin is soft and malleable, allowing amygdala to sculpt it with relatively little effort. However, as time goes by, the skin dries and finally reaches a state of complete hardness. This makes it materially impossible for amygdala to continue its work. Only at this point is the skin removed from the amygdala structure and stored for inclusion in calyx. Each of these skins expresses a mark that has been made in symbolic and material terms. It is a primitive sign that makes visible how an artificial intelligence, trained in basic instincts, has acted and learned on a body. Another work by Donna Roma is the performative work Alia Zutai, protagonized by intelligent robots and dancers as well as the artist himself. His work wonders up to what extent new technologies may have an impact on the physiological, psychological and cultural basis of human existence. Marco Donnarumma Alia Z Tai 2017 to 2018 100 years have passed since Czech writer Karl Kapek wrote his science fiction play in 1920 titled IUR Rossum's Universal Robots starring humanoid robots so it's nothing new for robots to star in a theatrical setting the difference between that pioneering work and Marco Donnarumma's action is that in this case the robots are not mechanical machines or humans in disguise. They are intelligent machines that improvise their interactions with humans on stage in real time. In this case, these robots star in a performance that depicts an imprudent game of struggle, power, and vulnerability. The video documentary of Alia Z. Tai shows a group of humans and several artificially intelligent prostheses. They build and destroy their relationships, during an unpredictable ritual of rejection and acceptance. The work asks whether, far from being passive intelligent as software, body sensors and robotic devices may in fact be affecting the physiological, psychological, and cultural basis of human life. The artist also asks what kind of identities are produced by AI and robotics, how do these technologies influence the way we understand and discriminate among human bodies? Or, who is normal and why? Maybe the kindest uh, phase of these living together between human beings and intelligent robots is offered by the work Co All Assistance by Justine Ermer. This work addresses the relationship between human beings and the machine, but not from a hierarchical uh, approach uh, led by power and submission but rather it addresses a relationship of learning, mutual learning, based on empathy and respect. Justine Imad Co-AI Existence, 2017 What does a machine need to become human? Unpredictability the ability to express feelings and emotions, empathy and affection. In this work by Justine Imad, the alter robot has human features, but the artist makes it clear that it is a machine. 
It is endowed with a very primitive intelligence, sufficient to learn to distinguish voices, gestures, and to react with its own movements. Thanks to a deep learning software system, the machine is able to record, memorize, recognize, and reproduce gestures and sounds based on a very simple system of movements and signals. But at the same time, it can improvise and show unpredictable reactions. Its intelligence has nothing to do with the logic and reasoning that we all know from the old IQ tests. Alter's intelligence, called body kinesthetic, is directly related to the ability to control body movements and emotional expressions, just as a professional actor would. In this work, Imad does not use artificial intelligence as merely a tool. She reveals to us that an algorithm can define an entire singular character. Even though it is a machine, Alter is able to react and adapt to its environment. The work also shows that the coexistence between machine and human need not be governed solely in terms of power and submission. Imad aims to propose a different type of relationship, marked by mutual learning, improvisation, creativity, and a certain empathy. Is this possible? And we reached another interesting question in our itinerary proposed by the group La Ramascotta with interactive installation Exo Cerebro, Exo Brain in English. The term was coined by the anthropologist and sociologist from Mexico, Roger Batra, in his study on uh, brain anthropology. According to Bertra, the exobrain is a kind of uh, extension of uh, consciousness omnipresent in form of our cultural processes as writing, art, music, and all kind of symbolic and material structures, including robots and AI systems. This theory also is in the line of the theory by Baudrillard, when he says that machines do not represent but uh, the show of our own mental processes. Lara Moscoto, Exocerebro, 2020. What is consciousness? There is no unanimous scientific definition, but there are many theories. Among them is that of anthropologist and sociologist Roger Bartra. According to him, consciousness emerges at the point of confluence between the electrochemical signals of the brain and the cultural symbols of the social environment. The exocerebro exobrain is therefore a metaphor for the mind, a kind of extension of consciousness. It expands and is present in the form of cultural prostheses, such as writing, art, music, and all kinds of symbolic structures. Laramascoto's interactive installation is a poetic approach to this theory and consists of two parts. The first is an immersive projection on the floor that invites you to place yourself in a liquid space. You will see how your presence makes the fluid change according to the movements you make. The second is a frontal image in which you can recognize a rocky element, like a meteorite or an orbital planet whose interior contains the same fluid that appears in the interactive part. The ambivalence of the two materials suggests you are placed, metaphorically speaking, on a very deep plane of your psyche. You will see that what you feel, think, and do contributes to modify and transform the environment in which you live.
in a different connection and going back to the biological and introspective uh, dimension of our brain, the action field of mental processes is especially visible in the work Enoya 2 by Lisa Park. Artist uses the signals of her own brain produced by her mood and mental states to visualize the vibrations of her neural activity on the surface of water. Taking into account that, uh, uh, depending on the age, uh, between 60 and 80 percent of our body is made up by fluids and brain between 75 and 85 percent, we should wonder whether we should be a bit more careful in terms of what we think or feel. Lisa Park, Euonia 2, 2014, mental and emotional processes usually consume 20% of the body's energy obtained daily through breathing. This fact, imperceptible in our daily chores, becomes a tangible value in Lisa Park's work. In Eunoia, she uses her own mental and emotional activities as artistic and symbolic tools to create a unique visual and sound score through water. The title is translated from Greek as a beautiful thought. The work, presented here as a video, shows the artist with electroencephalographic EEG sensors that record the bioelectric activities of her brain expressed through alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves. At the same time, she wears a brainwave measuring headset, and through customized software, converts the data of the brain activity resulting from her current state into sound. During the performance, the personalized code calibrates the volume, pitch and range of the sound based on the artist's varying attention and a meditation of values. The sound produced by the speakers creates vibrations in the water that correspond to the intensity of Park's mental states. Thus, the artwork allows us to take part in her invisible emotions and physiological changes. The design of the Yunoya installation is inspired by an Asian Buddhist symbol that means balance. The reason for the number 48 comes from an ethics by Spinoza, who classified the 48 human emotions into three categories, desire, pleasure, and pain. Eastern wisdom has long said that we are what we think and with our thoughts we build the world, will that turn out to be true? Some scientific uh, works have also demonstrated that human beings usually have around 60,000 thoughts a day. Nearly 94% of those thoughts are repetitive thoughts beyond our control, and moreover, 80% of them are negative thoughts. To regulate these uh, apparent mental hyperactivity, there are several options. One of them is offered by Emmanuel Golob with his interactive installation Doing Nothing with AI, not to do anything with AI. This work uh, addresses the fact that our relentless mental activity is not a synonym of uh, more productivity, but rather the contrary. You will check it by yourselves when visiting our exhibition in situ. Emmanuel Golob, Doing Nothing with AI 1.0, 2019. Did you know that we adults usually have about 60,000 thoughts a day? About 94% of this mental activity is repetitive and beyond our control. On top of that, 80% are negative thoughts. Stopping this incessant mental activity from time to time would not only relax us, but also allow us to rest much better. 
Experts say that inaction and inner listening would also clear our minds and make us more productive, effective, and even more creative. Have you ever tried to stop your thoughts? It's not easy, but this artwork will help you achieve it. This work addresses the misguided relationship between business and productivity or even efficiency. It's a robotic sculpture with an artificial intelligence system that interacts with you through your brain waves. To promote states of mental inactivity, Emmanuel Golob and his team created this neuroreactive installation, in which an EG sensor records your brain activities, especially your degrees of attention, distraction, stress, or cognitive load. The sculpture responds to this data with a robotic choreography that adapts in real time. After a few minutes of adaptation, the automatic learning model progressively learns to move the robotic sculpture according to your mental relaxation process. The robot's parametric control system generates a movement extracted from more than 4 million possible choreographies, interacting with your mental state in real time. I wish you could also experience how kisses and affections influence our mood. Although, for that, we do not need to experience a work of art. The interactive installation and action called Kissing Data Symphony by Carol Lanzell and Herman Mart in our exhibition, with all the documentation of uh, their itinerancy uh, traveling the world, has uh, illustrated once again our condition as social and effective beings. But this work also addresses urgent issues related to the over-exhibition of the most intimate sphere in social media, data protection, and other ethical issues. All of them are unsolved issues. Lancel Matt. Kissing Data, 2018. In these moments of forced social distancing, physical closeness and affection seem more distant than ever, but they are no less important in our lives. This is shown by data collected from the work of Karen Lancel and Hermen Matt. Their performance are captured on video here, and installation Kissing Data Symphony proposes an environment starring couples showing their affection in public. Both carry multi-user EEG sensors that show, in real time, the reaction of their brain waves to the shared experience of the kiss. The projection on the floor reflects the mood of each partner as they kiss. In addition, during the live action, the brain waves of some viewers are also recorded, reflecting their reaction to the intimate kiss of the protagonists. Both the couples and the viewers' records co-create this immersive visual environment. An algorithm translates it into sound. The result is a symphony of data generated by all the brains during the kisses and their observations. If current protocols allowed it, the different soundscapes produced during the work's travels through several European and Asian countries could be downloaded and printed as the portraits of a shared kiss. In any case, this work raises several questions. How important are feelings to our minds and general well-being? How do the emotional states of others affect our own moods, feelings, and thoughts? Despite distance, can we participate in other people's affections and positive feelings? The artwork also raises questions about the protection of data relating to our emotional states, biochemical, and electrical reactions. It poses different paths of exploration, not only related to neuroscience or psychology, 
but also to sociology, anthropology, or communication. And still unsolved is an aspect addressed uh, in the last work uh, entitled Beyond Human Perception by Maria Castellanos and Alberto Valverde. The consideration of other uh, non-human sensitivities and intelligences. In fact, their work addresses a research uh, field that is very recent and very much related to our ecosystem, and more specifically, plants. Anyhow, their topic uh, addresses some of the pending issues, issues related to these other sensitivities and intelligences, quote unquote, that maybe we should start to understand. I will now refer to the multiple warnings and signals with which the environment seems to want to communicate with us, and I will leave it there. It is not sufficient to know how we uh, feel and think human beings, but also how other uh, beings and live living organisms think and feel, because we live with them, even if we want to ignore them. Maria Castellanos and Alberto Valverde. Beyond Human Perception, 2020. Life is communication, said the great microbiologist Lynn Margulis. While humans associate it with verbal, written or gestural language, plants communicate through electrical and biochemical signals. Plants are also able to recognize certain sound signals, to which they respond in different ways. If the sound source comes from a pollinator that they want to attract, they respond by immediately producing a nectar with a higher concentration of sugar so that the insect comes to their flower. During research conducted by Maria Castellanos and Alberto Valverde at Oslo Met University in Norway, they observed that plants and humans reacted in a synchronized way when they interacted. This fact was the trigger for this project. In this work, the artists perform an experiment in which plants and humans are the audience of a live music concert. You can see it in one of the projections. Through the measurement and recording of human brain waves and the electrical vibrations of plants, together with mathematical algorithms, the artists explore the relationships between sound stimuli and the physical reactions of both organisms. In the other projection, you can see in graphic form the responses of each participant in the experiment. Humans on the right and plants on the left. By comparing human and plant reactions, Maria Castellanos and Alberto Valverde create a bridge that brings us closer to the plant world, a territory that is unknown and, surprisingly, not so different from our own. Thank you very much. The great effort made by artists and the technical staff and, and human staff of a laboral center of art to set up this exhibition, most of it only done virtually uh, or telematically. And thank you very much to all the institutions and companies that have made this exhibition possible. Among them, uh, the Cultural Forum of Austria, Madrid and Wien, the Foundation Mondrian from Amsterdam, the Good Institute in Madrid and Munich, and Munich sorry, the company Kuka Robotica, Barcelona, and the CSIC, and as I said before, they have granted us with a neural neuron sound for our multi-user platform. 
done by two Enrique artists and musicians and engineers, Enrique Tomás and Daniel Romero. Also, thank you very much to, uh, for the generous collaboration and counseling of the Institute of Neuroscience and the Center of AI of the University of Oviedo, the Regional Ministry of Culture of the Principality of Asturias, and the program Creative Europe. Precisely, as one of the 13 members of the European Art and Artificial Intelligence Lab, I lab, we have been able to set up this exhibition and program of activities of Winter Lab in Laboral Center of Art and Industrial Creation here in Gijón, Asturias. Thank you. 